the rest of the story. Every day at about the same time, around noontime, this same young man would visit George Williamson's Chicago candy store. Now, he was an undistinguished lad, except perhaps for his sense of humor. He rarely, if ever, actually bought candy, but he loved to talk to the shop girls. In fact, after a while, the youngster had made of himself an incredible pest. Mr. Williamson would often admonish the little fellow that his employees were there to make and sell candy, not to joke around with visitors. By the way, Mr. Williamson would say, didn't the boy have anything better to occupy his time? But the child remained undiscouraged. And pretty much all through the year 1920 and beyond, he returned to the Williamson store each day to talk and to joke and, and, <laughs> and to get in the way. But this is the rest of the story. The young women who worked at Williamson's had a brainstorm. At long last, they decided that this little pesky boy was determined to haunt the place, so why not make use of him? The next time he came in, for example, they could tell him they had a job for him, that there was an errand that needed running. The task need not even be necessary, only something to preoccupy this eager little boy. And if doing favors discouraged him from coming in the store, so much the better. Well, the next day the visitor arrived on schedule, but before he could say a word, one of the shop girls called his name. One of the shop girls called his name. Would he please go fetch something or other at such and such a place? And, of course, such and such a place turned out to be halfway across town. But instantly, the lad's eyes lighted up. He'd be glad to help out any way he could, he said, and in a flash he was out the door. And from that day on, every time he walked into the store, some designated employee would call his name. Some designated employee would call out his name and make a request. And so much for the pest. In fact, the more favors the little boy did, the more errands he ran, the more the shop girls realized what a good-hearted, really well-intentioned little fellow he really was. And the best recollections are that after the summer of 1921, folks around the Williamson store never saw the youngster again. And if his last name were ever known, it has long since been forgotten. And yet old man Williamson made certain that you would never forget that young man. Because, now remember, whenever they had an errand, they would just call out this young man's name and send him off to wherever. One day, the company, the employer and employees, were debating a new product name. Now, don't get ahead of me. They had a new candy bar, and they wanted a new name for it. And after only a little discussion, they agreed on that little boy's name. Because it had been spoken around the store surely more than any other. Each time there was an errand, somebody would call out. Now, you may have heard that this candy bar was named after the alias of author William Sidney Porter, but that's not so. From now on, you're going to know that the name of that candy bar honors a little boy that... a little boy that you never knew by echoing the voices of the shop girls at Williamson's when they would call out each day, Oh, Henry. <laughs> oh, Henry. And now you know the rest of the story.